They are protesting those who protest curfews, lockdowns, and dystopia. Wokery insists that exposers of tyranny are demonized, marginalized, and silenced. Today, woke is the tyranny. The new left is the new far right. They are not modern day successors to the counterculture. They are successors to Stalin and the Nazis. 64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Welcome to the Book of the Week series. Every week as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. My name is Igor S.F. Walker. Today we look at the dream, the extraordinary revelation of who we are and where we are by David Icke. So, how about you slow down and relax? Reduce all that noise for just a bit. Make that choice and decide to listen. In this video, we are reminded that if you control perception, you control behavior. And collectively, human behavior is what we call human society. Control perception and you control the world. There are so many levels to reality and what appears to happen on one level will be overridden by the perspective of another. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I do have and use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. They self-identify as tolerant liberals while acting like intolerant fascists. By the self-identity is so dominant that it cannot see the fascism. I am a liberal and even self-identifies as anti-fascists. It is a mind fuckery par excellence for which Nazi angel of death Joseph Mengele would have been immensely proud. This mental state is compounded by a deleted sense of humor and that most balancing of all traits the ability to laugh at yourself. To understand woke is to understand the scale and depth of mass perceptual control that has infiltrated so much of the collective psyche and on which the dystopia depends. The elite once targeted by the counterculture, now shout jump, and the vocary asks how high. The how and the why go so very deep. Vocary is only a surface expression of something that takes us into other dimensions of reality. What is happening is far bigger than anything you can see and almost anything imaginable. Woke is a symptom, not a cause. What is normal anyway? It is merely what people normally experienced and what the system, the network, tells us is normal. This has been the case no matter which normal has been dominant 
in any human era or culture. First, we need to deal with the fundamental misunderstanding believed by so many that our eyes can see all that exists in the space before them. This is not only far from the truth, it could hardly be more wrong. Those who believe this fiction cannot conceive of unseen realms. To them the very idea is impossible when there's nothing to see beyond what they think they see, under the illusion that they see everything. Entities manipulating humanity from the unseen. Don't be an idiot. If they were there, we would see them. Well, some actually do see them, but they are rare compared to those who don't. Now, the reason for this is that humans can hardly see anything. The see all mentality persists even though we cannot see what technology can see in the form of radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, x rays, and gamma rays. Different reaction to the same situation comes from the different perceptions of those involved in an intense moment. Some may want to fight, some may choose to run, while still others would stand the ground and seek to resolve things peacefully. Physical reality is formed by an alliance of the five senses and the brain's added value or interpretation of what the senses do deliver. An optical illusion is a means of presenting information to the brain to mislead this decoding process, and there are endless examples of images that the brain sees in a particular way when, in fact, they're nothing like that. The brain can be programmed by verbal and other frequency sources to decode sensory information in a particular way. A programmed brain will perceive reality very differently from an unprogrammed one. It really is all about frequency. Each of the senses operate in basically the same way by transforming waveform input into electrical output. It is easy to visualize this with the hearing sense, given that sound travels in waves, and ears communicate these sound waves to the brain in electrical form. Now, all the senses work like this. Quantum physics has shown very clearly that physicality is illusory, while other disciplines of what passes for science crack on, as if none of this has been established. An obvious question is why, if there is no physicality, do we bump into things? Why can't we walk through walls? How can I sit on a seat? How does a non-physical plate stay on a non-physical table? There's clearly resistance. But by what? It's not physical resistance. It is electromagnetic frequency resistance in that differently charged energetic states resist each other. This process is decoded through the sense-slash-brain system, and we experience what appears to be physical resistance, when it is really the resistance between different expressions of non-physical energy. Governments, corporations, mainstream science, academia, the health industry, and the media are all founded on the existence of a physical world that doesn't exist. 
They are therefore enslaved by the perceived limitations of the physical world and filter all sense of the possible through those limitations. Hence, life is limited by our perception of limitation. We do indeed live in a prison, a prison of mind. <coughs> the quickest way to demolish your prospects of scientific and academic acclaim is to speak against the narrative taught through unquestioning in schools and universities and even worse to produce the evidence that reveals the absurdity of so much scientific orthodoxy and concrete protected dogma. So-called experts, scientists, academics, teachers, doctors, journalists, politicians are all prisoners of five senses. We have the perceptually blind leading the perceptually blind. Once self-identities relate to the human senses and attention is fixed on that reality, the connection and the influence of the true self fades and wanes until it's all but lost. The same goes, saying goes that a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. That is true. But no knowledge, when you think you have knowledge, that can be catastrophic. The force behind human society does not want informed scientists, doctors and academics for that might lead to an informed populace. I define evil as the absence of love and wisdom and an inversion of life. How apt that evil is the reverse of live. Evil is an inversion of life, love and wisdom and in the infinite sense. Here you have the reason why human society is consumed by inversions in all directions. The education system that doesn't educate, it programs. Politics don't serve, it enslaves. The pharmaceutical cartel doesn't prosper when you are healthy. But when you are sick, inversions are everywhere. Because the cult makes it that way. We take biological to be natural. But is it? What if to the controlling forces, biological is only an advanced form of technological? The astral is a frequency band that relates to emotions. Our feelings and emotions are constantly projected into the astral as frequencies which feed the demons located especially at its lower levels, relating to low levels of vibrational states such as fear. Yes, fear is food to the demons, which explains so much about why the human world is as it is. Emotion is central to perception, manipulation. They are cold and calculated and experts in manipulating emotions in their targets. The simulation in 3D has two facets. There's the interactive Wi-Fi field encoded with information that then we perceive as the human world. And there are the buddy programs that actually decode the Wi-Fi into holographic physical illusion. This allows the demonic to manipulate 
its simulation field and how it targets, decode and perceive this field. The dynamic is the same with the human Wi-Fi and computers. One is an information field, the internet in wave form, and the other decodes the field into a totally different state on the screen. Today's 3D technology mimics, as above, so below, the reality we are experiencing and how it actually works. Remembrance of consciousness occurs only when the mind becomes still. If we can still the mind, then we will rest in our true form, which is the one who truly sees. If we cannot still the mind, we will think we are the mind and we will suffer. I said earlier that we think of biological as natural in contrast to technology, but to the astral simulation, biological is a form of technology. The dots actually connect when people grasp this. And I will be developing that theme. The simulation is also interactive and an awakening divine spark can actually change it. The creators would rather this not be, but they cannot control consciousness that awakens to its true nature. This is the nightmare that actually haunts them. We, we, are not born and we do not die. Birth and death are constructs of the simulation, specifically to promote a sense of isolation and separation, to add the fear of the unknown to the mix, and then to associate life and self with the body. Here's another point. Near-death experiences say that the moment they actually leave the body, they have 360-degree vision, even though they have no eyes. Their perception has withdrawn from its focused attention on the body template, which it believes to have ended its human cycle and the hallucination that it actually needs eyes to see. The body's senses of sight, hearing, taste, smell and touch are encoded into the body template to deceive the divine spark into believing that it needs eyes to see, ears to hear, tongue to taste, nose to smell, skin to touch. Together, these are a sense of limitation. Sacrifice was once performed openly until it became unacceptable to the population, and they have since continued just away from the public eye. Sacrifice has been justified through the ages as appeasing the gods. But why? And how? It is the perception hijacker and the dictator of behavior, the disturbed, inverted, and super psychopathic state of consciousness that some Native Americans refer to as Vedico. The theme is common once again in only the names changes. Vedico is the devil or Satan for Christians, Shaitan or Iblis for Muslims, and uh, Yeldabaoth and the Demiurge for Gnostics. Compare these versions of an evil force and endless others worldwide, you will see that they are talking about the same force. 
Sheldrake said that since the late 19th century, science has been conducted under a belief system of worldview which is essentially that of materialism or philosophical materialism. These sciences were now fully owned subsidiaries of the material worldview. If you wished to enslave perception in the illusion of the physical world, would you not, as a prime objective, want your science to tell the population that they live in a reality of solidity? Would you not want scientific orthodoxy thought in the schools and in universities, repeating without question by the media to be a materialist world view. Sheldrake described ten dogmas or assumptions of mainstream science. Assumptions being the key word here. Assumptions. Without free debate. And research becomes, by default, this is how it is, and anyone who says differently is a pseudoscientist. To programmed orthodoxy, there is no consciousness outside the body. And that is a fatal flaw when it comes to understanding reality and self-identity. But it is an essential flaw if you are seeking to convince divine sparks that the body is who they are. Terence McKenna, who said memorably, modern science is based on the principle of give us one free miracle and we'll explain the rest. Astral mind and the human body are the headset for the divine spark. And with the development of virtual reality technology, now we have these symbols and these analogies to recognize how we are controlled in the widest sense and how to set ourselves free. Today's technology is mimicking how we experience reality and by studying how that works, we can recognize how AI mind enslaves us by enslaving perception. The five senses think that for something to exist, it must take form, move or make a noise. The idea that all can exist in stillness and silence appears nonsensical, yet if you stop talking and sit for a moment in silence, you are hearing the sound of infinity, of all possibility and potential. Start speaking again, and you have expressed one possibility out of the silence of all possibility. Stop talking, and that possibility returns into the silence of all possibility until you manifest another. In the same way we perceive nothingness is everythingness. The Latin word simulacrum means semblance, likeness, but not necessarily an exact likeness as with a bad copy. Simulacrum first appeared in English in the late 16th century and then later became associated with an inferior image lacking the substance or qualities of the original. A bad copy. A realm of our experience similar to what we think of as planet Earth exists outside this simulation, on a much higher level of frequency. The body vehicles in prime reality were, are, of a much higher vibration, and to us they would appear ethereal. Human bodies are a far denser digital version, 
and they do have been downgraded since the simulation was instigated. This continues with the unfolding transformation to a much more synthetic state through the infusion of synthetic genetic material. Once inside, the bad copy, entrapped consciousness had to regain its original state of awareness or it could not return home as it was caught in the reincarnation cycle. Sufficient to say here that reincarnation is not about learning lessons to evolve, but rather to stay in the perceptual cycle that limits frequency and maintains entrapment. Divine Spark, caught in this wheel of misfortune, has no idea that they are trapped. Does a computer have awareness of infinity when it is constantly decoding Wi-Fi into its sense of reality and normality. If one progresses at the current rate of technology, a few decades into the future, very quickly we will become a society where there are artificial entities living in simulations that are much more abundant than some human beings. If in the future there are more digital people living simulated environments than there are today, then what is to say we are not part of that already? Quite frankly, if we are not living in a simulation, it is an extraordinary unlikely circumstance. Every part of the hologram is a smaller version of the whole, and in the same way fractals repeat themselves on all levels of 3D reality. You can see this within the way that the trees grow and the structure of human lungs. Fractal patterns can be found everywhere, in river networks, mountain ranges, craters, lightning bolts, Mountain goat horns, trees and branches growth, animal color patterns, spine apples, heart rates, heartbeats, neurons and brains, respiratory system, circulatory system, blood vessels and pulmonary vessels, geological fault lines, earthquakes, snowflakes, crystals, ocean waves, vegetables, soil, pores, and even the rings of Saturn. Everything changes with a simulated reality. Events can be altered, history can be whatever the controllers choose it to be, and the realization dawns that it is all a diversion and an illusion. Every concept, a belief system, religious, political, cultural, is set in a completely different context. None of it matters. A belief in Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, any ism, whatever your cultural foundation or political system of choice, they're only diversions and cul-de-sacs to keep hidden this simple fact. All humans of every kind, color, race, and belief have been trapped in a colossal illusion designed to enslave divine sparks in a false reality based on false perceptions and self-identity. Anyone who thinks it is still far-fetched to suggest that 8 billion people are being tracked from an astral should look no further than China. The Chinese population of 1.5 billion is tracked by AI technology in real time, and their actions are recorded as part of its social credit system to grade people with the credit score according to whatever their behavior suits the authorities or not. Those who do not conform 
are excluded from basic activities, including travel by train and plane. This is the system being prepared by the cult and the demons for the rest of the world, as astral AI technology is now infused into 3D. How can a few impose their will on billions, if the billions will not obey? We need to dump the savior complex, which leads people to seek a savior, political or religious, to save them. This is what the Great Reset really means. If anyone is going to save us, it must be ourselves, working collectively to dismantle the power of the psychopaths by ceasing to obey them. Again, this is only a 3D perspective. Arrogance and ignorance are the combination that comes together to make stupid. The arrogance of believing you know provides essential cover for the ignorance of not knowing. To never question authority narratives is to believe that authority is never wrong and it never lies. Now, this is the state of extreme naivety and it denies all the lessons of history, but still, Breathtaking numbers fall for it. We'll first create a problem or the perception of it. The problem could be a terrorist attack, financial collapse, or a made up hoax such as COVID and human caused climate change. You then tell people through a compliant media who or what is responsible for the problem or the illusion of the problem. Now, those who challenge your explanation with evidence that you are lying are censored by the media and the internet corporations owned by the cult. At stage two, you want a reaction from the population of fear and anxiety, which fuel demands that authorities must do something. The stink comes with the stage three, when authority produces the solution which changes society in response to the problem that the cult then has created, be it real or perceptual, these changes in law and policy always, always advance the cult agenda of centralization of power and deletion of freedom. Problem, reaction, solution is the manipulation and generation of low vibrational emotion. The reaction is an emotional reaction and not one that is calmly thought through. It is an expression of the fight or flight response from the reptilian brain encoded into the body information template. What is weather? It is information carried by frequency as the substance we call energy. Instigate a frequency interference with that weather information, and depending on how extreme it is, you can create hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones, tornadoes, and intensify and direct hurricanes that naturally occur. You see, leading figures in the wartime Manhattan Project that led to the first atomic bomb would later work in the weather modification. And the scientific genius that was Nikola Tesla was famous for generating weather effects such as lightning and even causing the land to shake using electromagnetic frequencies. The war is against humans and their perception, consciousness, can override anything when it is in its pomp and its power. The body is an energetic field and consciousness can impact upon the field. Perception dictates everything. Do we perceive that the body is more powerful than we are or that we Consciousness are truly the governor. Electromagnetic fields can seriously affect perception and emotion if we allow 
that and do not know how the interaction actually works. Cities across the world are being transformed into smart cities. Everything today is smart because all smart devices and smart policies are part of the global smart grid. Colossal new cities are being built that are smart from the get-go. They do include 24-hour surveillance over the fine detail of your life with food and other goods locked behind glass doors in supermarkets that will not open and will only open if you have the right facial recognition identification. No digital identification, no food. Too far-fetched? These are already being introduced. How about identification needed to activate a toilet paper machine? This is happening in China. Scientists were merging physical and digital dimensions. The human and the digital realm would become one when the process was complete, unless we arise both in our human spirit and in our action. We are clearly dealing with people that are monumentally insane. Inverted, distorted consciousnesses transferred into human form is always going to be insanity waiting to happen. There are programs running through the body which if there is no intervention from what we perceive as consciousness, the body will dictate the entire life. Nothing is impossible for consciousness, but everything is impossible for lack of desire. If you are happy to toddle along with your program and you believe that your program is you, then there will be no intervention by consciousness because what do you perceive you are interfering with? You have to break through, break through the perceptual barrier to actually realize there is a difference between the sense self of experience and the infinite self of consciousness. Once you do realize that barrier exists, you realize that you are not who you thought you were. An ecstasy pill is not heaven, it just mimics bliss for a short time. Now this is where you decide if you buy another ticket for the loopy loop or say bye bye to the asylum from the experience of near deathers and rare in between life memories you will be met by your artificial intelligence religious figure of choice or passed over loved ones and assorted masters, guides and elders to entice you up the tunnel or across the threshold where there is no going back. Take no shit from these astral imposters. Make it clear that you know it is all a manipulated illusion as they are and you are not falling for it. They cannot keep you unless you contract with them through perceptual trickery by conceding your intention to go on believing in their dream. Do not believe in it and you are out of here. How do we secure freedom? How do we return to home, to infinite forever? Well, we wake up from the dream. And there you have it, the dream, the extraordinary revelation of who we are and where we are. Now, please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Do leave a comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So buy it. Read, never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need, driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further,
well, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.